98 FM's Now That's What I Call Sport podcast. You're on the That's What I Call Sport on Dublin's 98 FM. It's Jamie Moore here on Sunday. You'll get us bright and early every Sunday morning between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. And the extra edition of the show every Sunday night between 11 p.m. and midnight. And I'm delighted to welcome Manchester City and Ireland International Megan Campbell to the show. Megan, welcome to 98 FM again. How are you? Hi, Jamie. I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem, Megan. Thanks very much for coming on. 33 senior caps for Ireland, ex St. Francis, Rohini, Florida State, Seminoles, among others as well in the in the in in your career here in Ireland before you moved away to the UK. You're also a long throw expert and an ambassador for the Spar FAI Primary School Fives programme. Um, and you're here to have a chat to us about all things soccer. Uh, first of all, tell us how you are. You, you suffered a really serious knee injury um, towards the end of, of last year, ruptured ACL, anterior cruciate ligament, which is the most serious knee injury a sports person can suffer. And unfortunately, you've 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 had that injury, and you're now in the middle of your rehab. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, I was very unfortunate to get it. I was in the middle of playing Champions League uh, home leg in the round of 16. Um, it, and it was just into the second half of the game and I've gone to step up my right foot to then tackle up my left and unfortunately my right knee um, it should have bent which it didn't um, which ended up in the, the tear of my ACL so it was quite unfortunate and very painful at the time but you know it, it's a long road to recovery but um, I've done it before and I know for for certain not to be able to come back from it again yeah, you've had some other serious injuries, which we'll speak about in a minute. Um, in terms of where you are now, Megan, how soon into the recovery process are you? I know you've had a very serious operation, um, and you know I think different knee injuries take different times to heal, and the process of recovery is different. So, where are you at now in the middle of January? Um, it was five weeks on Wednesday, so it's it's in a it's in the early stages of rehab as such. And um, they say it's a six to nine month injury and. The first month is always the most boring when you can do minimal and trying to get the swelling down and the movement back. Um, so I've gone back to City and started my rehab process and thankfully I'm able to progress more so than others. I think I'm on, a, I'm on the right road to recovery basically and I'm ahead of the game so it's where I want to be at this stage and I'm just happy and I'm trying to be as patient as I can with it, but at the same time, I'm trying to push myself as much as I can to get back as soon as possible. Yeah, as we said, it's a long process, six to nine month injury. So you're looking at, you know, a long period on the sidelines still. And Megan, it's not your first serious injury. You picked up a bad ankle ligament uh, problem with international duty. You tore your quad in rehab, uh, both of those in 2016. And you also had to have an ankle reconstruction later in 2016. So unfortunately for you, it's not the first time you're in the middle of of rehab from a serious problem because you've had a couple uh, before in the last year or so? Yeah, it's not been the best two years for me since I've signed for the club, but there's highs and lows with your career and, you know, it happens to the best of us and um, I've got through it before, like I said, and I know how to deal with it mentally and, and physically as to what my body needs to, in order to get back to full of fitness and I'm just going to work hard and use every um, asset that I have at City to to get myself back on the pitch as soon as possible. Make the comparison for me, Megan, between the mental recovery and the mental side of rehab like this and the physical one because they're both very different but both probably as important as each other. Yeah, definitely. I think physically, obviously, at the very start of your rehab, you're not going to see much difference in, say, muscle uh, atrophy and stuff like that. It's very hard to gain muscle and to see progress within your rehab exercises, etc. But um, I think mentally it's always very tough with you see your teammates while well, I see my teammates going out and they're going out training and I'm still in the gym doing my rehab and I'm, you know, you're staring at the same four walls constantly and you're you're with the team but you feel like you're kind of still an outsider towards the team um, as such and obviously injuries don't travel and that's, it's unfortunate but it's also for, it's for my benefit for my rehab is to stay behind and to continue my rehab so it's tough in one sense because you're not with the team and you're not travelling with them and you're not at the games and, you know, supporting them all the way. But then at the same time, you know, in the back of your mind, it's, it's for the best and it's hopefully going to get me back as soon as possible. So it can be tough and it can be very lonely at times. Don't get me wrong. Um, I've been through it with my ankle, like you said, and it's not an easy road to go through. Um, I don't know anyone who's gone through a serious injury or anything in life, like it's not easy to get back from, but... Um, when you do, obviously, and you and you reap the rewards, which I thankfully did um, last May, it's it's just nice to have those little positives in the back of my mind to know, you know what, Maggie can actually do it again. So it's tough, but I'll get there. 
Megan, talk to me about from the injury to the long throws. I was watching some videos which we're now going to post on our Twitter page at 98FM Sports of your long throws compared to uh, another uh, Irish player in Rory Delap and um, you were able to create a goal for Stephanie Roach against Slovakia. You were able to create another one for Louise Quinn among two that, that I've certainly seen on video. It's like an arrow, it's like a dart. I'm not sure how else to describe it. How would you describe your own long throw weapon? I'd say a great asset to have, but not one that I necessarily want to use as much as much as I do. Um, it's obviously a great thing to have, you know. It's it's not something that I've ever trained or practiced. It's just been a natural thing, and I've been thankful to have that, um, to be able to use it to our benefit for both club and country, and obviously country more so than club. I've used it more. Um, but, you know, if the team relies on that to, in order to score a goal or to to win a game, then I'm going to do that for them. It's nice to have in the back pocket, but I do like to play with my feet as well. <laughs> yes, of course, and we're not going to only associate you with the long throw, but <laughs> if it is such a, a big weapon, and it is such a big weapon, particularly for Ireland under Colin Bell, and I know under Sue Ronan before that, and, and so on, and you've used that at some of your clubs too, such a good weapon, why do you not like to use it as much? Um, not not as not so much as I don't like to use it. Maybe I said that wrong. I think it's important that Obviously, our club with, with City, you know, we like to get the ball down the grass and play football, and you don't want to be seen as that one-dimensional team who who only have a long throw and stuff. And even with country too, you don't want to be just known as that team who, oh, they've got the, the girl with the long throw. Like we're good enough with our feet, and there's very talented girls in that squad, and you don't want to to, to take away from their talent um, as such. Um, but obviously, it's a great asset to have. Don't get me wrong. Like if you're giving me a game against. Holland to qualify for our first major tournament and I have to throw the ball in and when we score off it then you know I'm going to do it like hands down um, it's just one of those things that it's great to have but um, I don't like to use it if we don't have to yes of course and uh, Megan explain to me you mentioned that you don't have to to practice it or don't have to train it up when did you first discover that you had a long throw and uh, I know any manager who, who you would have played under would 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 have used it in in certain games. It, it's not something that everybody has. So when did you first discover that you did have such an ability to throw the ball so far? And interesting to say that you you don't have to practice it; it's just there. And if and when it's needed, you can use it without much effort. Yeah, um, I think I was about twelve or thirteen, and I was playing with the boys' team down in Drogheda, and I threw and I was longer than the rest. And I think they just said like throw it again, Mick. And as I grew, then obviously it got longer and. It's been a great helping hand with with me with every team I've been to. Like you said, like over in America, it was it was a great asset for us. And then when I came back to City, we've used it a few times. And and obviously with national team, it it continues to be a great asset that teams can't really deal with. So it's not something that I'm going to stop doing ever. But hopefully, we won't be able to or we won't need to use it as much as we do. Yeah, let's talk about your international career so far. Megan and the Ireland women's team at the minute under Colin Bell the 2019 World Cup qualification campaign has started fantastically well you scored and got an assist in a 2-0 win over Northern Ireland away in the opening game you then went to Slovakia uh, a 2-0 victory there as well and then a scoreless draw away to the mighty Netherlands I know you missed that game I think you just picked up the injury beforehand but joined top of the group with the Netherlands seven points from nine a really impressive start under Colin and um, I know the girls are playing two friendly games against Portugal this week but uh, it's been a really positive start, seven points from nine. You couldn't have really asked for, for too much more than that. Yeah, definitely. I think if you had said to us before the tournament started that you're going to have seven points going into the new year and three games in and you've played the, the European champions and you've gotten their all draw against them, I think anyone, any one of us would have taken that um, with both hands. Uh, it's, it's honestly been something that I've never, never really expected, but it's great to see because we've such a young squad and there's loads of young players coming in through the ranks and um, it's just great to have them have that opportunity to be in and around the squad and experience things and, you know, obviously it was a great start against Northern Ireland and I was very thankful to be able to help out my team and with the goal and stuff, but I think the emphasis went on our positivity as a team and, you know, our togetherness and the willingness to work for each other and you know, do everything we needed in order to get the result on that night. And then we travelled and, you know, with, with Colin, we take it game by game. We don't look forward as to, oh, you've got Netherlands after this game or it was just next focus was on Slovakia. And when we went away there, we knew what we had to get three points away from home. And we were thankful enough to do that and keep another clean sheet. And I think the main, like a big factor in 
the last three results was our clean sheets because obviously if they don't score, we're going to get a result. Um, and I'll, I'll always say it as well. I remember the first day Colin came into the into like a, a meeting with the team and I sat down after just coming back from an injury and he welcomed us into the squad and whatever. And he said, the one thing that will stick to me for with, with me forever is he said, I want to be in France in 2019, but I don't want to be there as a spectator or a fan. He's like, I want to be there on the sideline while he was on the pitch playing. Um, and that drive and, and mentality and knowing that your manager has that belief in you as a team and as players, you know, it goes a long way, definitely. And so it was to, to kick off the campaign like that with those words to then come out the other side of the year with seven points. You know, you can't complain at all. The next two games for the girls in green, Megan, are uh, two home qualifiers. It's been a, a long time since the campaign has begun and you've not had a home game yet, but Friday, April 6th, you'll host Slovakia and Tala before uh, on Tuesday, April 10th, welcoming the Dutch to Tala. Two big games coming up. And for those unfamiliar, the seven group winners of the European qualification stage will qualify for France 2019 automatically. The four best runners-up then go into a playoff process and... Uh, the start you've had and, and how things have gone so far, I know you may not be able to play much more in this campaign, but the start certainly uh, will give everybody hope that if you can keep things up, you've got a chance to, to make the playoffs. But at the minute, you're, you're uh, you know, staying toe-to-toe with, with um, the Dutch, as we said, and uh, lots to play for with uh, lots uh, more games to come as well. Yeah, definitely. We still know that we have to play Slovakia at home. Um, obviously, Holland, like you said, at home, we have to play um, Norway in a double header as well, home and away which are, they're a great team and they've been to many finals tournaments before, so it won't be easy coming up against them. Um, and then obviously we finished the campaign with Northern Ireland at home, which I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that that's, that's where I'm back in and around the squad again with the girls. You know, that's my goal is to be back in and to hopefully be a part of that success. If um, I'm not going to try and jinx it, but I'm hopeful that that game could be the difference between us qualifying or not um, come August. So... I'm hopeful that we'll get back for that. And, you know, I've ever faith in the girls and, and the staff and stuff. You know, they've been working very hard. And like you said, they're off in Portugal now for a double header against another great team, um, which will only stand to us um, when we come up against those teams at home and away. Yes, and uh, judging by the weather, I know you're back home in Dublin at the minute. Judging by the weather in Dublin, it's a little bit chilly, so you'd probably prefer to be off in Portugal with the, your fellow girls in green, but I'm sure you'll be, you'll be back with them soon enough. Uh, Megan, a final two questions. Let's go from uh, the country to the club. You're playing for Manchester City, and you spoke earlier on about your long throw and how you didn't want to always you know, be associated with that and how the team were the same. And we're, we're watching the, the Man City um, men's team under Pep playing such fantastic football. How do uh, the City women's team play in comparison to... The men's team because the the style at the club under under the first team and under Pep is a, is a passing style and I know your own team is very similar. Yeah, I think it's a it's a philosophy that is spread out through the whole club at every age group, under eight boys to under sixteens girls, like the whole way up through the academies. It's that's the philosophy of how we want to play at that club and how we want to represent the club with with our style of football. And obviously, it's come through in leaps and bounds with the men's team and they're doing phenomenally well. And I don't think anyone would have expected them to do so well um, up to now and you know the, our our team I'm trying not to be biased but we've, we've played really really good football at times and you know winning the treble last year and getting to the Champions League semi-final in a four year process where we've turned pro it's it's great to see those progressions um, and hopefully we'll continue to to progress and to win more trophies in the near future Megan Campbell thanks so much for your time the very best of luck in the rehab and I'm sure we'll chat to you again um, when you're coming closer to your return later this year thanks Jamie I appreciate it 98FM's now that's what I call sport back live this Sunday morning from 9 98FM